Good day, trader Stacy Berg from Stacy Berg Trading. Today we're talking about the anatomy of a trade setup. Uh, yesterday I spoke about mainly focusing on the U.S. session and explaining a lot of questions about that. And you know, let me clarify that there are trades in every session, but as the day evolves, the structure of the day becomes completed and then the bigger p picture the bigger thesis of a larger range expansion has potential to uh, give better risk reward so there are trades in each session we'll go over a trade from this morning on gold and nasdaq but also the anatomy of the trade setups on any major forex pair or on any instrument when that opportunity presents and understanding how the timings play into that and how outside of those timings that can give you a thesis or a potential entry just prior to a session. Major round numbers uh, and identifying the box for each session. So high and a low and a 50% area. So often the peak formations may already be in place or the market may go to an extreme and put in a peak formation. So people have said, how do you know the higher the low is locked in? We're going to go over that today. I'm just going to overview this and then the next following videos will continue to go more in depth but we'll break this down on each pair and just establishing a thesis as to whether or not there is an opportunity for a capitulation or a vertical style of trade setup and what I mean by that is the explosive move where you're in the trade you're not trading in chop and that's the whole point of my approach is I want to come to the screen look for the best setup at specific times so again, review the timings, Asia 8 to 11, London 2 to 5 a.m., New York 8 to 11 a.m., New York time. So 3 a.m. for London, 9.34 New York. Understanding that the initial balance is set in Asia, the initial high and low. So in that three-hour window, when they set the high and low, if they continue to go further, that means that the low, if they're going lower, that that low may not be in place yet. So that's our initial high and low in that three-hour window. If they go lower outside of that three-hour window, well, obviously the low is potentially not in place yet, which means they are working lower. They might be working lower to put a low of the day in place or a snow plow where they pull it back inside and roll it over for a range expansion later. Again, double zeros and fifties identifying are 50 pip boxes. We'll go through each of the major pairs and just do a brief overview. And again, I want to I want to reemphasize the pump and dump mentality. So I talked about three levels of rise, and again, in the following videos, we'll go more in depth in this. But the close gives you a wealth of information. How the U.S. session closes heading into the next day. Our 50 pip box is between 50 and 0 when the new day starts. Okay, so not hindsight, nothing else, major round numbers. Time of day, those are concrete. So for all the hindsighters out there, I'm not sure if you use different numbers or timings, but this is in place when the day starts. So if our major round numbers are 0 and 50, 50% 50 of that area then is 75. And what that means is that we're either looking for a sell high opportunity a buy low opportunity or a trade off of the 50% level. So if a market trades to a 50% level and coils at the timings or gives a, a sell or a buy setup into the timing window, that 50% level then becomes our new um, measuring point for a range expansion. So as I mentioned, if they put a high in place and the market continues to go higher, well, that means that the high is yet to be put in place. So in Asia, obviously, in the gap, there was a sell high opportunity. They put a triple top in at double zeros. They went back up into it. So again, 50 pips. So on the year, well, if I was going to trade this, I would expect 20 to 25 pips probably on this particular style of trade. Now this moves in the gap time into the Europe London window and puts a low in place. My thesis is already that we're going to be looking for something coming off of the 50% level by a, a, a buy low opportunity, which you'll notice came at the breakout of the previous day's low. The market broke down in New York 
closed back above. We had trapped volume below. I'll just color that in to show trade. Trap volume now is caught at the low of the previous day. They stop hunt down into that, put a low in place. So understanding now that our thesis would be a buy setup back towards the high of the day. Now, if traders don't take this at the London Open, the thesis then evolves over to the U.S. session. The market goes up and puts a high in place. One hour prior to the U.S. window, they go back up above that. And as I've talked about before, the 6.30 New York time, 6.30 a.m. New York time can be a high peak formation higher low put in place on any instrument. The market auctions down into the double zeros, into traders that are long in our U.S. session window. Our thesis then would be, as because this is opening up midway of the move into the numbers, obviously a New York equity market open for a long trade back to the high of the day. So we've had a market break out of our 50 pip box, breakout, pull back. Remember I said there are three things that markets do. They break out, they pull back, and they trend. They break out, they reverse and fail, or they stay in a trading range until they break out. So this market obviously gave a buy opportunity for double zeros at the New York equity market open for at least 25 pips. Now again, there are trade opportunities in these other times, but I'm talking about coming to the screen at set times. Is this a perfect trade setup? No, but I'm giving you the structure of how to approach the market, not trying to trade the move, every move in an instrument, but looking and filtering out the pairs that offer you the best setups. When we look at the pound, again, a, a better version of an ideal setup. Why? Because in the U.S. close, we had one, two, three levels of rise. And you've heard me repeat this over and over again. Three levels of rise. And what do we see? So when the day starts, before we even get to the Asian box, I'm already drawing my 50 pip box between double zeros and 50s. My median price, therefore, is 75. But in this particular instance, what do we get? We get a trigger of a previous day's high, and we get a peak formation, a peak formation that forms above the double zeros, breaking the previous day's high. Traders who are trading the pound in Asia, which I would say is not the most common uh, setup, obviously, for the pound, had an opportunity for a short trade at the high of the day in Asia for 25 to 50 pips down or when they if they came after the markets broken down so people have asked me what do you mean by a broken down market a peak formation trap volume and it breaks down now I'm looking for shorts and what do I see underneath so again these are all visual things you want to look for when you get three levels of rise I want to be able to see that there's space and I'll just highlight this I want to see that there's space in that lower 25 pip box whether I'm shorting it here up here here where this market has the potential to fall through the trapped volume in the upper quarter but coming back to our bigger picture we had a vertical move in London so talking about working from the high and low of the day if you're not in any of these trades, so we have obviously a low of the day squeeze for a vertical move in London, but we have a high of the day opportunity just prior to the U.S. session starting. So there's two things I will do. I will measure a distance so we can see where the consolidations and the pump and dumps go vertical. You can measure targets if you're into this earlier for at least 25 pips above where you can look to get filled for at least 25 pips back in the stop hunt or 50 pips if you're trading fit for or, or estimating 40 to 50 pips if you're estimating where a trade can fail if it just pins to a level so again understanding the timings if you came to this market 
just prior to the U.S. session 12 candle window. Your thesis could be that I'm going to sell the pop-up 1, 2, 3 peak formation in a down, broken down market for a move back down 25 to 30 pips to where this move began. So again, just coming back to understanding our high and our low, three levels, trapped volume, what's an ideal setup? Well, it, you'll notice when they go vertical here, the trap volume's in the lower part of the market. When they go vertical in the, the short trade, the trap volume's in the upper half of that box. Visual things to look for into the new day. So U.S. session, trap volume is down low. They move the market up 25 and 50 pips into this morning's session. We had a previous high of the day up top from the London window. Again, with this pair, I would expect the move to occur in the Europe London window. So now in the new day, I've got my 50 pip box. We're at the high of the day. 50% is my double zeros. This market could end up working and rolling over or coming back down to double zeros for a long trade or somewhere in here for a long trade back through the high of the day. Aussie dollar, another example. Okay, again, we have 50 pip box. And I'll just highlight that. So if we just highlight a couple of things, I'll just put this box in place. Again, noting underneath the lower region back to the previous day's breakout level, which potentially could end up being support. We have space. First thing you want to notice, the vertical move above the U.S. session high put in place just before the close of the session. So again, an opportunity, obviously the Aussie dollar has the potential to trade in the Asian session, but we have the pump up. It's only 50 pips, but they go up in the third level, put a peak formation in for a short trade back down on our low hanging fruit. So these peak formations give you information, obviously, for a trade opportunity. Now, if you come later and you're trading a different session, no problem. We have a peak formation low in London, in the Europe London window. So everything else is inside. So traders may have gone long in here, but when we come to the U.S. session, we now have a high of the day in place. We have a low of the day in place. We have higher lows in the London session. We have a high of the London session that we end up getting a peak formation put in in the gap. So again, traders may be looking to short the peak formation at double zeros if they're trading outside of the 12 candle windows. So again, I've had traders ask me, well, are there trade setups other times? You know, I work different hours. I can only trade certain hours. Well, these are where, what you want to look for. Peak formations in the gap that take... So again, coming back to the understanding, the three-hour window puts a high and low. Asia puts in the initial high and low of the day but they continue to go lower just prior to the Europe window. They pull it back inside, take out the lower highs. That's our new low in our three hour window. There's our low of Europe and our high of London, but they go out further, hit the stops, trigger breakouts, go back into the peak formation at double zeros, come back inside. So our peak formation is in place. The thesis then is a short trade back down, except now we're shorting it inside in the middle of the numbers. That means I'm looking for something at the numbers inside of our peak formation W from Europe off the quarter level as a potential stop hunt on the traders who are shorting it in the middle of the move back into the low of the session for an explosive 20, 20 pip setup. Now again, this is not an ideal best trade setup, but I'm giving you the breakdown in how to filter through the pairs. When we're outside at peak formations, this is where our opportunities are the best. Japanese yen. So again, US session low into the new day. 
projecting our low and whenever you see this vertical pump up start thinking pump and dump into the new day we have three levels of rise perfect this is an ideal possible best trade setup we have three levels of rise there's the high they drag it back inside and go vertical in Asia we have our peak formations above 50 traders may have shorted it right off the bat and got 25 but if you're not trading Asia we now have a 50 pip box with a 50 percent level is the high of the day locked in possibly do I have a pump and dump within the session itself absolutely pump pump so if we're selling high we're not trying to buy it into the high we don't want to buy into the high if that's our peak formation high and I'm looking for a trade at the session timings this market now potentially has the high of the day locked in what am I looking for I'm looking to short this market on pop-ups back through not only the low of the current day but through the low of our 50 pip box and through the low of where that move began this is an ideal best setup for a vertical capitulation now again just following this through three hour window then establishes our high and our low remember what I said when you get a pin draw your line when you're at the high or low of the day that can then establish that is the low do they continue and break out of that low or do they lock in the low of the day we're 25 pips outside of the US session then they proceed to pull it back inside work into the low then in the gap peak formation back into the low and go vertical before the US session starts they get traders shorting back down into the low so again understanding that once they have volume trapped everybody below this peak formation now if they shorted this market if they haven't been stopped out or gotten out of that trade are now trapped our thesis when we see a vertical move like this this spacing is that that's the low hanging fruit for a vertical stop hunt which again we might get 25 this is before New York opens so when I get a move in that first hour, I stop until 9.30 New York because I know that they may come back and then continue or do a second move once the New York 9.30 a.m. session starts. So you can go back through your own charts, but it's important to have a process each day, whether you're trading a session or over the course of the three sessions for New York again with larger volatility instruments NASDAQ gold there are two approaches we can look at the bigger box the hundred pip box and then build our thesis from there the market puts in a peak formation low and they work down into the bottom of the box for a vertical move up they break through just blow this up if our 50% level obviously in a hundred pit box is 50 now again just paying attention to how the session closes creeping trend down this is or potentially order flow for the market to go vertical through but they layer on top of 50% they go up three levels and layer on top of 50% that means we could be getting volume caught up top there's our pin in the first hour on the third level of rise peak formation peak formation and then the collapse with our micro M structure now so again if you're not trading Asia what it's important to understand is that okay we come back later now there's our high of the day they've put a low down in place in Asia and gone down into that low right at the beginning of the Europe window we now have a hundred and fifty pip box that's three levels of fifty half of that is seventy five so if fifty percent is seventy five 
we put that line in place. Why? Because 50% levels are where a market can break through and pull back and retest. Later, as the day evolves, we can be looking for a trade off of the 50% level. The market in the gap comes off the 50% level, breaks through the high of the day. What that tells us before New York opens is that they've gone higher. We have stops outside of this box, which means that they potentially now may be going long because we have money up top. They've broken the high. They didn't fail at the high or inside of the high. They came off 50% and broke out, and now they've pulled back inside. They get traders shorting back into the low prior to 9.30 New York. If I'm in this trade, which I was, there's my 150 pip box. I'm looking for a range expansion target of at least one. It blows through and pulls back. Now I'm targeting the second expansion of that range. These are not FIB levels. People keep asking me, how do you use your Fibonacci? It is not Fibonacci. They are 100% expansions of the range. So understanding if you're at the low of the day, London opens, I've got low hanging fruit. I'm only looking for longs. Why? Because these are all shorts that are caught down low. They're going to go straight through that. Where can it fail? It can fail either at the timings, but they put a high in place. They put a high in place, and then what do they do? We'll zoom in again. They put a peak formation above that high and pull it back and come back inside. So again, understanding your box, your 50% levels, and then forming a thesis, you could have shorted this, absolutely, but at 9.30 New York, this market has the potential to explode. So coming back to this morning, again, this is a trade I did take. Going back, looking at our peak formations. Peak formation, 0 and 50. I have only two levels of rise heading into this session. But we have volume in the upper quarter. I have a high of the session trading into the peak formation. My 50% level is 75. They go up into the high and make an M structure and break down. So again, understanding, do I have volume caught in a quarter level? Absolutely. Is there space? Yes. That's what I want to see, space, because they can go straight down. They drop it down in the first 15 minutes. When I talk about giving the market, there's opportunities to sell at the high. But if you want to take the safe trade, the market gave a consolidation at 50% and the short trade at the half hour mark for the 50 pip explosive trade straight through the low hanging fruit. I talk about when they ramp up volume and they get you, you up in the upper quarter buying high, get suspicious. This was an easy, no stress trade over in 15 minutes. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now we have three levels. The market as the day evolves, we now have a 75 pit box. We have a high and a low. So we come back later. There may be another short trade later into the gap. They might continue to go lower. This may be the peak formation low. I don't know. I'll let it trade. This is why I take the trade. I shut it down and I come back later. Without running through the entire day of gold, the same thing. Just just quickly understanding there's a high of the day when the U.S. session starts. The three-hour window made a high and a low. Obviously, there was a short trade in the gap, but they continued to put a low of the day in place. They put a low in place in the Europe-London window. They come back down, pin through the previous day's low and pull it back inside. And... Right when New York opens, they break out into the low of the day, pin hammer at the low of the day. Thesis being a minimum of a trade back to the high of the U.S. session. But the opportunity to go back to the high of the day, or three levels, was in place for this market. So again, understanding the importance of timings, 
how the market sets up, the high and the low of the day, this is an ideal best trade setup. So instead of trading all this swings and chop, when you have the opportunities for the explosive moves, these trades go vertical and they're over 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, but they don't come back. Again, this morning, just looking at the nature of how the market closes. What do we have? We have a market that goes up three levels and then puts in a peak formation. The U.S. session high is right there. We're on the third level. We have space in the lower quarter. The market goes up into the high and puts a peak formation in place. First 15 minutes consolidates underneath the peak formation high for a vertical move back down for 25 pips. So again the pump and dumps recognizing where trap volume is. These are short trade obviously but there's a long trade last night. Letting the day establish and then using your 50 pip boxes. If there's three levels even better but if you have a 50 pip box this is an example of a quarter level and a quarter level around double zeros but the high of the day from the US session gave us our thesis for a peak formation stop hunt and a short trade back down. So hopefully you got value from today's video traders. We'll break this down and go further into depth in the next few videos. Have a thesis each session. Recognize your major round numbers. Understand peak formations, trap volume, and what the opportunity is for that session. Keep it simple and may the markets go with you.